Welcome, welcome to another episode of Cyrus's podcast. Today we have Elizabeth Eddy on the podcast, professional soccer player, entrepreneur. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really stoked. I can't wait to get this started. I appreciate you for being here. I um, um, we connected on Instagram, but because a mutual friend said we needed to connect. And um, so thank you, Whitney. Yes, shout out. Thanks, Whit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm really excited to have this conversation. Um, I want to kind of start with before pro soccer, actually even before college. Like when did you decide you wanted to even play professional soccer? Um, I would say I didn't decide. I was, I think, 14 and I was starting to, I was playing for SoCal Blues, which is a pretty big yeah. and good club in the area. And I was starting to get recruited um, for college and I had gotten like invite to these national team stuff. Yeah. And then I think I'd gone to a camp around 14 or 15 and I was like, this is what I want to do. And I was like, the goal is to like play in the Olympics, which I haven't done. And that's where we're at today. But that was the goal. And I was like, if I have to go to college, I'll go to college. Like, if I need to go do this, I'll do this. Or play pro, I'll do that. That's the goal. So yeah. it was more of like a means to an end. So I would say I'm still in the means situation. So you, so like, it was like, a, and how old were you around that age? I think I was like 14. I remember like laying in my bed vividly one night and being like, okay, this is what I want to do. That's pretty cool. And then what made you believe that that was actually possible though? Um... Okay, I think that's a bit of a loaded question. I think a lot of it has to do with like how I was raised, my family situation and dynamic and how my dad is, I would say mainly. And then I would also say the positions that I was put in, which again is like my parents' choices at that yeah. age, where it was like you're around like the best possible competition always. And it was just like putting you out there. But then my dad, like he like, played water polo at USC and he like raced in the America's Cup for sailing. So his like, he's like, if you want to do something, you need to go be the very best you can at it. Otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Don't say you want to do it. So it turned into this like situation of like you have to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. Yeah. And for example, like I had gotten hurt at points in my career, and the conversation turns to, well, are you doing everything that you're supposed to do? Okay. Oh, you're not stretching enough. That's on you. So yeah. like that type of thinking, since a young age, was like, oh, if you have a goal, like this is how you get there. And then I watched that like repeat that feedback loop. Like this is true. This is true. This is true. How my dad acted, and then like his successes, and then oh. Okay, I believe what he says because he does it and it works. Yeah, interesting. So your dad, like his mindset and thought process on how to reach success yes. is like the main like reason. Like cheat code. Talk Our, to me about that mindset though. Um, he, he has this like thing he does where like he kind of like acts like life's just like fun and like, oh, I just have a good time, go work hard, like good vibes. But like inside he's like a killer. So, like, being able to, like, see, like, oh, he's playing this game, but, like, it's genuine, if that yeah. makes sense. But then at the same time, he's, like, tactically making choices, moving, doing, like, doing things in certain ways. And when I would, like, was pretty young, I would say, like, around 10 or younger, he would have me in his business meetings and be, like, speak up. And I'm a girl and, like, in these a bunch of adult men that are, like, good at business. And he's, like, share your thoughts. And then I would share them. And then his friends would, like, question me. And he's, like, okay, back yourself. And, like, that was That's made cool. me be, like, that was completely unrelated to sports. But, like, you need to participate. You need to engage. You need to listen. And then you need to, like, have a thought. And then you need to explain why. And yeah. that was, like, a really, like, that formed me to where I'm, like, when you're at sports, sports is, like, an extension of that because really sports turns into social dynamics yeah and like yeah you have your athleticism and your natural skills and then you'll grow other skills but if you don't understand the dynamics of how to like i'd say play your hand well like but also like sports is like synonymous with business i i know like just coming from like being a professional athlete going into like like the business world it's so synonymous it is so much about like 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 that thought process, which I think is so cool. I'm like thinking like I should do this with my niece, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah, I love that. That's so cool because it's like, it's, you know, as an, as an athlete, like there are times that like things we're going through or whatever, like that we don't want to talk about that we don't, you know, like, and to just to learn to communicate like in a way that like is a professional in a professional manner, it probably helped you propel as uh, as far as a youth athlete as well because like coaches actually like respected you versus like the one that their mom or dad oh yeah yeah and he was big on like you need to do it 
and then if they'd tell me stuff and then I took that really seriously like I want to do it yeah, and yeah. because like that like was relationship was set at a young age it was like I would say very like confidence building and like allowed me to be independent and like kind of I would say almost like have a mind of my own where like a yeah. lot of my peers were never given like the freedom or the structure to like over way to think yeah. and then they're like what does mom or dad say? And they're so attached to that. And then they're attached to their friend group or their teacher or their coach. And I'm like, it's really like, sad because it's such a disservice where the person never gets close to their potential because a certain skill of that my dad was like, you will learn this. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then like work, like it was a very valuable skill that like has carried me, I would say. That's so sick. I love that. That's really cool. So then, so then you, you, you have this, that, that your, your dad's teaching you. And then you're, you're playing in, um, at SoCal Blues, you're 14 years old. You're like, hey, I decided I want to go. I want to play in the Olympics. Yeah. So that means I have to probably go to college yeah. and play pro. What kind of support did you get when you made those decisions? Um, that's a really good question. So my parents are like anti-pro sports. They're like, what a selfish pursuit. We never watched pro sports growing up. They're like, you should not be a fan of other people. You should be a fan of your own life. So like, go have fun. So wow. the, plus, so like what I learned step one, now step two is like, do what you want, but like, don't expect like pats on the back. Like, yeah. just make sure you're actually stoked what you do every day. So that was like another layer where you're like, I guess hands free, like do what you feel. So like, I remember, I think at 15, my mom was driving me to club practice yeah. and she hates traffic. She doesn't like to drive. Are you, are you sure you want to play? Like, <laughs> I've invested so much time and energy and effort. We're spending a lot of money for you to play. Do you really like it? And I'm like pretty like, I'll, like literal. I'm like, so, I mean, I, I think I like it. Like, yeah, I think I want to play mom. Like, that was the conversation that, yeah. like, was my response. Okay, fine. And then, like, I made, I think around that age when I made the blues, maybe it was 13, that conversation. So then I went, she's like, you're in a carpool. I've got three younger siblings. Like, off you go. Yeah. And then go to college. And they both, my parents met at USC. So, like, they're stoked. They're like, yeah, fight on. And I do remember I was, like, made the youth national team, I think it's 15, 16. And then met, played in the U15, U17 World Cup. But my dad, like, you're getting all these letters, like, come to our school. Like, let's have a conversation. We're interested yeah. in you. And like really long stack, my dad's like, all right, we're at like our friend's beach house and like, we're gonna get the legal pad out. Pros and cons list. And then he's like, where do you want to live? Where do you want to get, like who, like what type of like person do you want to marry? Like, what are you interested yeah. in? And then we're making all these lists. And then he's like, okay, so you sound like going to be in Southern California. I was like, yes. Again, I haven't traveled much. So like, it's yeah. just very much like what they showed, but like, and then, okay, well it's like, sounds like it's USC, UCLA. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, you're, you're not going to UCLA. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to try dad. So then like we go to do a tour and like Jill Ellis is the coach at the time. So we're touring and I'm just like, so I like love my dad a lot. So I was like, Jill's like asking questions. And I'm like, yeah, my dad played water polo at USC. Fight out. Like, and I'm like, I am just making this worse. And at the time I was playing for her on the U20s, like after the U17s. Yeah. So she's the coach of the U20s and I'm getting recruited to college. So like girls on her college team are also national, which is a bit of a conflict of interest. Yeah. And every camp for a year and a half before the U20 World Cup, right after the 17s, either her or another player would be like, hey Liz, there's a four for UCLA. And I would be like, no thank you, fight on, like what a little punk. Which again, at the time I was like, I think I've grown an awareness of like how to play your hand well, yeah. but like definitely like didn't really help that relationship with the Jill Ellis and I, but it's okay, you lose some and you do win some. <laughs> um, and then I went to USC and they were supportive, but like then they had like my younger three siblings they like are pretty involved socially so they're like come to games when they can but it's not like a lot of my peers parents are like at every game have been drinking yeah. like it's a fun social thing to do like our other social calendar like they're not like obsessed with it and in the pros i've played for nine years and i think they've been to like maybe like nine games total yeah like i mean my earlier my dad be like oh i have a business meeting in dc oh looks like it lines up <laughs> it was not like I'm flying out to see like that never happened so it was yeah. I was like oh like I'm excited that dad's business brought him here where then my teammates I think at Gotham three or four years ago parents again are everywhere they're like do your parents even love you what and I was like I never questioned that I don't know I think I think so <laughs> pretty sure they do yeah and like, back to my like I take it pretty literally I'm like mom and dad do you guys love me because this is what my teammates say and they're like what do you mean? And I'm like, well, like everyone else's parents show up. And then I was like, you want me to come? I was like, that'd be cool. So she starts coming a little more. Yeah. Still has been to maybe nine games. Too, but like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a very interesting upbringing of like teach you skills, but also like not like, just like not like live their own lives. They never yeah. lived through us. They like support yeah, us and they respect it, but they're not like, I just feel like it's a very different experience to most of my peers. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I think that that's how my, like, that's how it was for me. So Rewind, like my grandma, my uncle, and my dad all passed away in the same year. Um, and when I was younger, when I was like That's 11 rough. years old, 10, 11 years old. So like my mom, I'm the last of five kids. So like my mom, you know, was like 
busy taking care of everything she needed to take care of, right? So like, but like growing up, like I remember when I made the decision to play, like I want to play pro soccer. I was not good. Like it was a different story. Like I was like, I mean, you started pro at seventeen, so you can't be like, not good. No, like I was like on the worst team in the worst, like in bronze at the time, right? <laughs> okay, like I know the, bronze. The, yeah, the lowest level bronze, of soccer. Yes. The worst team. We lost every game five to zero, and I played goalkeeper. Like it wasn't like I was like some like growing faces for sure. You know what I mean? But that's when I decided I wanted to play pro, mostly because it was I was like probably twelve. Okay. Yeah. It was like because I, it was the only thing that like got my mind off of like everything going on at home, right? Totally. But growing up, like I think my brother came, my brother came a lot to all my games, took me like my older brother and oh, things like sick. that. Um, but like even when I went like and I was playing pro, like I was playing in Europe, I was playing like so my my mom didn't come. Has to come see to probably yeah, games. She like I remember she came to like a, a Chivas game one day and like I I never cuss in front of my mom. Never, not even like you won't even Class hear me say stupid in front of my mom. You know what I mean? Don't like, be mean, be nice, 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 nice. <laughs> right? And on the field, forget it. Oh, my, I'm like, you run know, your mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I'm playing, I'm like, we were like not playing well. So I'm saying, yeah, exactly. Drop, are you effing kidding me? Blah, 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 blah. Like just yeah. screaming. And my mom, the first thing she goes after the game, instead of being like, that was really cool, she was like, your mouth. And I was like, <laughs> Really, mom? Yeah, come on. Like, she's like, there's kids watching you. And I was okay. like, and I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. You know, okay. so it's always been. It's really funny, like that thought process of like it's bigger than football, right? Like this thought process that like it feels like your parents were like is like it's more important about like you enjoying your life and it being about like understanding that like soccer is here, but like it's also just about everything else in life, which I think is super powerful because then it releases this. Like, um, I think as an athlete, we have um, this mindset of like, uh, like I mean, it's an opinions game. That's what we do. It's so sad. It's, That's it's it. entertainment. It's it, right? Like, and like one day a coach can have a great opinion about you and the next day they don't. And that's just And your life. career is over or you're and on a team or you're cut. And yeah, and you're that's it. Yeah, it and so it's such an interesting thing when you are an athlete and it's this thought process of in like like my career depends on xyz person's opinion and i think what's really cool is like like your parents are like my mom like they've kind of set you up like in a way that like it's okay because i'm enjoying it yeah like doesn't really matter because like i enjoy it and i'm going through it so like so that's really cool like i just think that's like a good thought process especially like setting you up to go pro like definitely so because then, there's so much no nonsense you'll deal with oh yeah <laughs> like it's all nonsense like i'd say 10 percent is like soccer yep 90 percent is so many other skills you never knew you had to learn and things you do not want to do yeah but you just choose to do it because it's the only way you get to do the 10 percent you which you love exactly a 100 percent. that's rough. yeah but at the end of the day like it's worth like, it it's worth it <laughs> Because when you win championships or you win games, like it's the best feeling in the world. And when you lose them, it's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. But you have that itch to win, you know? Like we, we were at lunch the other day, me and some of the girls at Angel City. And we were talking about, like, we have one fantastic moment. You score a banger. Yeah. Make a huge tackle. You, like, think about it for, like, a day, maybe a couple weeks. That is what drives you through, like, again, like, almost 98% of, like, things that are just hard. Yep. Like, you love some of them, but it's just hard things. And you're, like, it's all for that moment of, like, such high... I don't know if ecstasy is the right word, yeah. but like such high good feelings that you're like, it's worth it. I want that feeling. Again. Exactly. Well, it's actually interesting because I think, again, like I, I compare soccer because like soccer, I know more than anything in this world. Like, like, and I compare it so much to life. Like it's the same thing in life. Like we have these ups and downs and like, and like the happiest moments are what drive us for everything. I yeah. mean, like if you really think about it, like you think about like, some people's happiest moments in lives are like, you know, getting married and things like, and having kids and so on and so forth. But like, like we are so like, that's what drives us through life. But then we have to deal with the breakups and the, the death in life and so on totally. and so forth. But like, it's just about continuing to go to chase those yeah. amazing moments that make us feel great. Right. Like, yeah. And it's so synonymous like soccer and and it, life. it really is. I feel like soccer is a microcosm of life. You yeah. have every feeling in 90 minutes, 
and then <laughs> you can live real life. But this is your practice round. Get on yep. the field for 90 minutes. So you're going to practice all the feelings and yeah, be a exactly. crazy person or not. Yeah, exactly. Most of us become crazy. <laughs> We're all crazy. <laughs> So so then so then you went so you went let's get back on track so you went so then you went to to USC went to USC um, talk to me about how that experience was uh, that was a pretty gnarly experience I I think USC is the best school in the world hundred percent drink Kool Aid and I stand by that but my experience like I wanted to play soccer like I love yeah. soccer most so soccer was very bad for me at USC my coach he was part of that like. Varsity Blues scandal, you can watch it on Netflix. Yeah. So he got fired five days after my last game. But for the four years mm-hmm. I played for him, I like, I think by the end of my freshman year, and then it was also the same as sophomore junior year, friends at Stanford UC were like, transfer, we have a full ride for you. And I was like, don't talk to me, I'm emotionally unstable. Like I was like, I yeah. wanna leave. Every week I'd cry, I'd call my dad, he'd be like, what do you like? What do you want long term? Like follow through with the commitments. Like it's two hours of your day, 22 yeah. hours to go enjoy your life. Like. Stop being a baby, basically, which yeah. like was what I needed to hear, and I like, grew a lot from it. But like, it was very, very challenging. But I would say the best thing, which I'm so thankful I stayed, and I'm so thankful that I went to USC, was because soccer was really rough. It forced me to do other things at the school and grow. And USC has so many cool opportunities otherwise. So I think my my junior year, I walked on the lacrosse team. They ended up paying for grad school. Oh wow! And I did five years. Ended up doing. I started. I did start, ended up starting grad school. I joined a sorority. I live in sorority house. Like I got to do so many things. I started like athlete invite, which like every semester there's like a sick formal party where you have like six buses. You take all the students, yeah. the athletes and their date to like a super dope club. And like, then they all get brought back and there's like this whole contact. Like it's a really cool thing. It's still going on to this day every semester. And yeah. I'm like, wow, like start things and make it better for the people. But like, that's cool. That Wait, was, so you started athlete invite. Athlete invite. Yeah. And like now I'll see kids like met my boyfriend at athlete invite 2K19 and I'm like sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, like, I say my favorite thing in life is like creating experiences for people to like yeah. meet new people and like build better relationships and like have that's fun. That's pretty cool. And so many people don't have fun. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, y'all are missing out. And that's like the whole point of life. Yeah. It's all a game. Yes. I like, I 100% agree. I So like going through like this, I guess like rough time with soccer. soccer so bad. Why is that? Um, me and the head coach really butted heads. He ended up like, doing things obviously illegally which is very public but um he his style of coaching was very like aggressive and yelling which i thought i wanted my club coach barely spoke like we called him the soccer monk we won the championship multiple times and he like coached the youth national team so he's very yeah. good but like was like super stoic this guy was like super emotional which like yeah i want this it was hard but like he like i think my freshman year for example he was yelling at us and he cursed a ton and i wasn't around that a ton growing up and I sometimes don't manage my facial reactions well. So I think I was like this. And he was like, oh, you don't like my language? In front of the whole team. And there's like 35 people and I'm a freshman, like yeah. first week. And I was like, again, why did I say this? It's rather one dimensional. The whole team starts laughing. Like he just came out of my mouth, I wasn't thinking. Probably from the business meetings my dad had me speaking. <laughs> like I was so confident to say what I thought. And he's like, oh really? And like from that moment it was like, oh, this is like now a power struggle, which I didn't mean it to be, but it kind of like happened. Yeah. And then it was like, I would, I mean, I just started a ton. Then he would bench me just for five minutes to try to be like, I'm in charge. And I'm like, dude, I'm, and so we just had a lot of struggles and like the team would start winning and he'd feel like he'd lose in the locker room. And then he'd like change the lineup again. It's like, dude, we're winning. And then he like would be like, I don't want you to play winger, which you're really good at. You're going to play outside back. And I was like, I don't want to play outside back. Now I've like my yeah. coach in the pros is like, I'll play you at any position. I feel comfortable starting you in a league. I'm like sick, like a yeah. still versatility player, but like you just have to go with what you get. But that was like, just like, it really hard. And when I joined lacrosse, my sophomore or junior year, or before I joined, I asked the staff in the XA meeting, all like the eight coaches. And I was like, Hey, I think I want to do lacrosse. And, and they're like, each of them had an opinion and they're basically like, you can be captain of soccer or lacrosse player. And I'm like, okay. Like if you guys say no, whatever you're paying for school, like I can't really fight with yeah. this. And like two weeks later, he's like, Hey, like talk to the lacrosse coach. Like we're splitting the deal. You're going to play lacrosse, show up in a week, ready for lacrosse. And I told the lacrosse coach, I was like, yeah, I played growing up. I played like one weekend of girls. Sorry. <laughs> and like maybe a year of boys. And like, they're so like, great, come back. And they see me play soccer. She's like, oh, you're really athletic. And I was useful and I helped them win. But like my fundamental catching and throwing skills were very low. So like that was like, I'd say like 
fun, it worked out, but like very much like it's lacrosse helped me play soccer better. Joining the sorority helped me play soccer better. Yeah. Doing grad school helped me play soccer better because it was like healthy distractions I could put energy towards because I have a ton of energy. And then if something's like not going well, if I put more energy and it just like, gets worse. Yeah. So the whole, the whole like focus where you can control things and then like do your best to be positive and helpful around the team. Yeah. And I would have to go through like weeks where he's like, okay, like you can't look at me at training. So I literally would literally be in like meetings and like eyes closed because apparently my facial reactions were distracting. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, what is happening here? That's insane. Yeah, he was, then he did the game where like center circle, he's like, you need to work on aggression. He basically had to play steal the bacon, threw the ball in the center circle and was like, all right, twos go. So two, the number two got. And the, the rules were like, no gouging eyes or pulling hair and get the ball back to him. And so girls were like, one girl has the ball, she's on the ground getting another girl grabs her, like smash it into the ground, so she like lets go the ball. Like it was like psycho. He like that is a very legal game nowadays, like yeah. 2023. Can't do not that okay. Now. But like he was like just was very like just intense. And it was yeah. like I'm fine with intensity, but like certain lines I would say were crossed and it was very hard. Yeah. Yeah. So so and and you got through that by being able to express yourself. Because I, I feel like as a as an athlete, like a lot of our expression of like our individual selves is on the field, mm -hmm. and when we're not enjoying that, we go through this like weird identity crisis. Oh yeah, right. Like where we're like, like who are we if we can't be ourselves in the safest space that we've known for our whole lives? So like, but you found that space yes. by doing all of these other things, which is who you are, right? Like creating creating athlete invite and creating yeah. experiences and doing all of this, which like like helped you become a better athlete? Yes. Okay. And I would say even like in the pros, like I realized like if I just, I think it's also a personality, I'd learn what works for you. Yep. But like I, I had to learn to have finesse the balance of doing other things in soccer, but like I like need other things to play soccer. Yeah. And, but like at the same time, I think I maybe swung over too far to need other things to where part of the way into my pro career, I was like getting injured a ton and like had to, oh wait, swing it back to like, now that you're not even a healthy environment, pro sports is like very, very hard. But like, apply yourself to the whatever the min, the not minimum, but like standards you need for so that you perform. And yeah. once that's met, then you can do other things. But yeah. like, as long as you're like, and I feel like the two things I feel like matter the most in pros is decision making and then like having fun outside of sport, whatever that is for you. Yep. So that it gives you the energy to do all the hard things. Like Correct. you have to balance those two well. And then decision making, I'm like, the whole thing is like when to do what and like. Like the what being skills, like technical, tactical, physical, yeah. mental. And then the when is like timing. So many athletes are not good at the timing. But like, I feel like also the way we train is like not helpful because you train like so team where like you're just told a lot of things in joysticks, especially in America, where like if you study the game, study your film, figure out what the moments and the positions you want to play are good to do and then design your personal training around that. So you actually get really good at game moments. Like that's what yeah. it is. Where like so many times you're like driven through cones and all this stuff and I'm like, what an interesting use of time. Yeah. Like, yeah. So like, what's the, what's the, move the needle the biggest in that direction? Yeah, I think it's like, uh, uh, and I think, again, it's synonymous with like business. It's like most of the time it's just priority management, right? Like yes. deciding like what's my number one, two, three, four, five, right? And like my number five doesn't take over my number one, like yes. period. And then you break down, like I always go from like, the the my goal so if my goal is this then like what do i need to do in order to accomplish that goal and then i break it down in priorities right like totally these are the 20 steps that i need yeah. but like which steps first and that's a really hard decision Those and a lot hard. of times that's where you really need like somebody older than you who's done it yep hey this is where i'm at in my journey you're three steps ahead what what should i prioritize yeah how did i get how did you get there where should i yeah and then you and that's a big part of like finding a mentor and things like that and like i mean do you like like now because you've gone through all this like do you have certain people that you lean on that like you ask those questions other than like let's say your parents or yeah definitely like yeah i would say like i've gotten to the point where i probably have seven to ten like coaches outside of soccer and outside of family like yeah or like experts at what they do that's cool. that i like have as resources and some i pay some i don't but i'm like this is my job again back to like if you're committed to it do your actions line up yep. my like goals and here's my priority list it's like you want to be the best pro soccer player you can be sick okay like right now i'm working with like a guy who's like 
he's like, I think a, he helped start CrossFit, Brian McKenzie. He's yeah. like, you do this test in my blood. I do this bike workout, test me every five minutes, tracks my heart rate. And he's like, okay, this is where your oxidative capacity is. You you should be here. You're not, you have really good, like almost mental toughness to suck it up as your body's dying. Yeah. But like, you need to build your zone too. This is why and how. So I'm doing a whole protocol from him just to build my base wider so that during season you can go higher kind of that's thing. Sick. So that's like one thing I'm doing. And then there's like, I have like a bodywork specialist. I have a specific soccer technical trainer. I have like yeah. tactics. I can I'm like, okay, if I said that I'm doing this, do it. Yeah. And some of them, what's interesting is like, I'm like really into like, what's the truth? Yeah. So some of these people are like so hard for them even to like tell you what they're good at. They're good at like one kind of thing and then like six other things that are, cause everything's really holistic at the end of the yeah. day. And once you start working with people who are at that headspace, it like game changer. And it's also like fun and fluid yep. and there's no like, here's your protocol. Yeah. Like you can't do that cause yeah, real life's yeah. too dynamic it, and they're super good at like, sitting in the half space and managing and being okay to be misunderstood yeah and that's and that's like i think i think that's just like when we get to that space oh life's fun it's fun and it's like success is like like success is really what we create right like our it's our choice yeah whatever success is and i think like i was having this conversation with somebody the other day like just choosing that like you are successful where you're at is like such a relieving concept and then realizing, okay, so now I can go and live in these half spaces. I could go and live here because all of the other stuff, all the noise is just noise. Yes. Right? And then it's just creating my best life versus, yes. hey, this is how it has to be, right? Like, And I feel like that too different, like how it has to be or what's my best life, like that like is a huge mental shift fundamentally. And until you get there, you're stressed, you're anxious, yep. you're overthinking. Like everything's bad, yeah. but like once you can shift, and I'd almost probably call it lifestyle design thinking. Like, yeah. like, and then it's also like really working on self awareness. Like, what am I good at? What am I good at? What is situationally happening in the world? Yeah, yeah. And then being able to like kind of like nuance, play that game, test a lot, and be comfortable to test. So many people can't even test. Yeah, they're scared to do anything, and I'm like. That's sad. I don't know how to help you really, but like you need to like be around people who think differently. Yeah, it's fundamentally exactly. what it is. Yeah, one hundred percent. I love that. So then you, you, you're, you're in the pros now. You're yes. at the best team in the league. Best team in the world. Let's in go. The world. <laughs> Angel best City. team in the world. Angel City. <laughs> best ownership. Best team. Best stadium. Let's go. Love Come it. at me. <laughs> <laughs> if you disagree, go ahead and yeah, uh, just DM me. You'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, blocked. No, yeah. just... <laughs> Immediately blocked. I don't find those DMs. <laughs> No, so so now um, you obviously love it. You're enjoying it and and crushing it. What's what's the next iteration of what you want? Like, where do you want to go with where you're at right now? Okay, um, so super loaded you, question. Yeah, no, no, I have a very clear answer. Did you ever do time capsules when you were like in grade school? Yes. Okay, in sixth grade. Mine no, I did a time capsule and like, I think we did one like in like, I was like in kindergarten or something. Okay. It's supposed okay. to open soon, I think. <laughs> oh, you have your own Okay. So we did time capsules in sixth grade at the school I was at. And my, I would say what I want out of life has been the exact same since my sixth grade time capsule. And I'm like, well, I'm actually living my dream. It's just way harder than I thought. Yeah. And dang, like I do still want this, but man, this is like really like just a lot of growing needs to be done. But like some of the things from that, that I'm like really excited about and want to do and pursue is like. I want to play soccer to give myself the best chance to make it to the highest level I can. And at this point, I would almost say like my perspectives change of like, I'm the young, I, I want to win a gold medal. Like, yeah, that's nice. I want to make the Olympic team. But I'm also like, I would say kind of what you said, you choose success. Like, I'm like, well, on this journey, I've become this, this, and this. Yeah. This is sick. If I don't make that, okay. But like, I'm so happy with where I'm at. Yeah. But that's also that's hard. It's such a beautiful space to be in, though, and it's so relieving. Like. Yeah. And well, then there's no pressure. And then yeah. when I'm playing, it's fun. So I get, I'm on this new Angel City I joined like four months ago. And I like don't know, I knew some of the girls who I'm decent friends with, but then there's other girls I like met in here. I show up, and because of how much I kind of goals had changed, yeah. I was like, my now favorite thing to change is talk trash. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to make you today. Like, and you're just running your mouth as you play. But like to get to that headspace to be able to do that, like you play better. You understand too, like, you know how training's designed, like goal training is different, but like yeah. the way they design training is like very team oriented. And it's sometimes even hard to do anything you're even good at. So yep. like then it's like better make your own game up in it. Cause it's not about you. It's probably got three or four players yep. to do the action the coach wanted. And you're one of 26. So like, yeah. it's not about you. That's I think the biggest news slash that everybody's yep. remembers an athlete. It's like, not about you, but manage yourself. Cause you care about you. Yeah, as exactly. you should. 100%. But like, so then it's like, 
just have fun with it. And that's been like the most joy. And like, I'm going to be in LA for like the future. And I'm like, sick. I just yeah. keep having fun with my friends and I get to be in my hometown. Like, are you kidding me? Is this yeah. real life? Like, yeah. <laughs> thank you God so much. Cause like, that's another thing I've realized. I'm like, there's so much outside of my control, outside of my awareness. And I'm like, I can have these dreams or desires yeah. or wants. The more information I learn, oh, I didn't want that anymore. Like, I just like, it's like, I think I want these things. And I just keep being in the moment. Get the Bible verse that God's like, like a lamp to your feet, like guide your steps. It's like the lamp goes like one foot ahead. Yeah. One foot at a time. Just that's stay it. in that headspace and it's going to be okay. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm like I actually, excited about. I actually love that too. And I don't want to skip over it because I think that's such a gem for like, like players to hear is like you, you said you create your own game when you're training. Like oh, that's it. That's all you do. Cause like, team training is not for you. Exactly. But like a lot of players don't understand that. So then they go into team training and then they're like, well, like how did it serve me? And it's like, no, like you have to create that. Like, like, you know, okay. How many passes did I connect today? Or how many? First touch today is my goal. Exactly. Like those little things. Like Like battling in my 1v1s is my goal. What? Pick a goal. And just like own it for those 90 minutes. Training's not even that long. Yeah, exactly. But then you get to, that's how you're going to level up your individual self on a daily basis. Because like our goal as professional athletes is like, one, our goal as an athlete, I think as an elite athlete is to play at the highest level possible for the longest amount of time. Yes. Right? So that's the sleep, eat right, stretch, yada, yada, yada. And it's All the a stuff lot, that we like, don't like, you yeah, know, like. But you do it. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to play longer. Yeah. And then it's it's just continually getting better on a daily basis because it'll compound, right? Yes. Like Compound is what eighth wonder of the world. Yeah. Figure it out, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's true. Like it'll, it'll just like as you become more and more it'll just become more and it'll just become you'll become better and better on a daily basis right like, totally so and i will also say with that like sleep eat this the cool thing is as you do it more and you kind of just actually pay attention to what you're doing you can optimize it to where it's efficient and then easy and then yeah. once you fit like kind of like you build one business and then build a night like you built you built your sleep habit or what works for you like and you design it around your personality if you mm-hmm. like to be social great shift your sleep schedule do what works for you because like the socialness is going to give you life which you need yep. so it's just like know that you can tinker with it and it needs to be your own yeah 100 percent. and then also understand you have to fill your cup to fill other people's cup like, yes i just hear key. that so much in your conversation it's like it's so much about that which is allows you to be free and do what you want to do on the field right like yeah. which i love that so okay so 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 what's next Oh yeah, I would say what's next is I I'm really I've been really into business. I've learned that during playing pro, it's not easy, and at one point I would say somewhat took away from my like attention. Yeah. And I I'd say I didn't share this with you yet, but I I think six years ago started like a traditional tech company, like raised funding, had a team. We were gonna launch in March 2020. COVID happened. The theory basically is like Tinder for food with friends. So decision making around group like food was the topic and like the concept like worked but then COVID happened no one ate out for like a year or two and it was like screeches to a halt and then it's like okay I pivoted in the concept then I was like okay same theory but like for entertainment like movies or tv shows again work but I was like you know what this is not the right time in life to pursue this so I like totally shut that down and I was like just be the best pro you can like there's playing pros like a limited time frame everything else like you have the rest of your life to do. Yep. So I've been like really like, I would say just scale back everything else and like really focus on just playing and like enjoying that experience. And then again, figuring out what I need to do to fill my cup up so that I can play well and like yeah. have fun and decision making. Like focus on every day and then you can be free and play. Well, yeah. But I'm also building something now in tech, but that's like aligned with soccer that like, okay, this makes sense because it's going to help me play better soccer which as I'm building the scenes, like learning to communicate, learning how the brain works, learning how like humans are optimized best and like designing a flow that like I personally use like every day. And I'm yeah. like, this works. Use this five minutes a day. I'm like more organized, clear minded. I play better and I'm like confident. We're like had without this tool, I'm over here. Talk to this. You're just so fragmented and distracted and you're trying so hard to get like whatever you need to get better. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, this tool helps you just kind of like stay stable or yeah. more guided. So like, I'm really stoked about it. I'm kind of like just figuring out like how to launch it, how to sell it. And I don't, I'm not like there yet, but like the product works. I use it every day and I'm stoked about it. That's sick. Yeah. That's super exciting. And like, I, um, I, I, it's actually really funny is like, it's interesting when you sit and you focus in on one thing how many opportunities for all the other things will come? On their own. On their own. 
And it's like this thought process of attraction, right? Like, like you, like when you make the decision, Hey, I'm going to sit and I'm going to really like focus in on the pro play, so play. be a pro. Yes, yeah. be a pro. Well, then you're going to meet the right people. You're going to do this. And then you meet the people that you align with. And then all of a sudden something comes naturally and it's like, why was I trying so hard? Like hamster on six wheels and I have two legs. Yeah, exactly. Stop being an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> At me. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, that's the thought process, right? Like, so like, I, I love that. And I love that you're, so you have this tool, you're going to launch. We don't know. We don't so know I would be like soft launch because I want like other athletes to use it. And then like, does it work for me? We'll refine it, refine it. My CTO is like, we'll get in the app store as soon as you're ready. I'm like, I'm not. Great job on yeah. V1. Like, let's, I need to like get people using it and figure out how to do that. I love that. So I can't wait to see that. Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, it's always exciting for me. Um, so I appreciate you um, for being on today. I want to ask one piece of advice for, I'm going to say one piece of advice for someone that is struggling in their college uh, uh, soccer or, or athletes career. Like what piece of advice would you give them? That's a really good question. I would say, I would, I would honestly say, have as much fun as you can, and then and then be like honest and take the responsibility for the that, the choices that that resulted in, and then th but you have to choose to do that, take the risk, so that you can figure out what works for you. Yeah. Because like, don't be scared. If you sit around being scared and like, what if someone else thinks this? Like, you're never gonna grow. So just like, take the risk, go have fun do what you actually want to do. And a lot of people are so like stuck in these like rigid paths. And yeah. they're always like, you have all these responsibilities. It's like, yeah, but like, do you? Like, I think half of it's a mindset. Like, yeah, can you balance soccer and life? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have to eat to play soccer, I have to sleep. <laughs> but what do you mean? That's just all it is. And so these thinking about it is like over stressing everyone out. And I'm like, dude, just chill. And like, if it sounds fun, do it or don't. Yeah. But like be more in touch with yourself so you know what that is. Yeah, and then have a, and then you build your own rules. Yeah, exactly. Which is amazing. I love that. I appreciate you for being on. Thank you so That's much. Um, where can people connect with you if they want to connect with you? I would say like Instagram. Instagram, what's your Instagram? At Elizabeth Eddy too. Can you spell it out because it's audio? E L I Z A B E T H E D D Y two. The number, not T W O. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate cool. you for being on. Amazing.